Chinese technology firm Huawei has overtaken Apple to become the second largest smartphone vendor by market share. According to reports, Huawei overtook Apple at the end of the second quarter of the year and has set its sights on Samsung's number one spot by 2020. The company became one of China's biggest technology firms thanks to the growth of mobile networking equipment and is now one of the largest suppliers in the world for that market. It, is, it was also an original design manufacturer, which meant it designed and made devices for other firms. We cross to Tokyo for the latest from Arise Asia business correspondent, Mayu Yoshida. Let's start with regional markets, Mayu. How are Asian markets wrapping up this week? Well, it's not so happy Friday for investors here in Asia. Sentiment is soured by disappointing results from U.S. chipmaker NVIDIA. A week results started with Apple, then uh, on to NVIDIA. We do have a lot of Asian companies that place orders on uh, these uh, companies. So we, weak results from NVIDIA and Apple really dragged down Asian chip sectors, especially here in Tokyo. No Japanese shares lost half a percent down for the second day. Uh, Japanese chip makers, such as Adventus and Tokyo Electron tumbled. Uh, the tech sell-off also pressured the markets in Australia, where the S&P ASX inched a little bit lower. Now, over in China, we do uh, we did see a mixed session. Hong Kong Hang Seng uh, gave up gains and ended down one tenth of a percent. Uh, but China stocks rebounded as Beijing continues to roll out measures to support markets and private businesses. Uh, this pushed the Shanghai Composite to post half a percent of gains. And and South Koreans' Kospi also gained two-tenths of a percent. So we saw a mixed session in Asia, uh, but cautious sentiment really prevailed in the Asian markets. Well, um, Mayu, we saw shares of Nintendo tumble in Tokyo markets despite the release of its new Pokemon game. Why is that? Well, analysts say the stock route didn't have anything to do with the new Pokemon game. Nintendo shares briefly tumbled 10 percent. Now, market chatter is a worry over the outlook of NVIDIA. It's all about it here in Asia. Uh, the U.S. shipmaker makes gaming processors for Nintendo Switch gaming consoles, and investors are worried that sluggish sales of NVIDIA's gaming processors is because it's receiving less orders from Nintendo. However, to boost Switch sales, Nintendo is betting on its new Pokemon games are released globally today. Now, analysts are hoping to see a similar sales bounce they saw in 2016 when uh, Pokemon Go's debut re reignited interest in buying Nintendo's 3DS consoles to play more games in the series. And since Pokemon is Nintendo's best-selling series after Mario, hopes for uh, better Nintendo sales are rising ahead of the Christmas shopping season. Mayu, I don't know about you, but I love the Pokemon game. Meanwhile, today, Chinese President Xi Jinping showcased China's Belt and Road Initiative to Pacific leaders. What was their reaction? Well, Western countries are cautiously watching uh, Beijing's uh, growing clout. The competition for influence between China and Western allies is providing a strong undercurrent at the APEC summit in Papua New Guinea. Uh, Xi Jinping's uh, multi-billion dollar Belt and Road Initiative uh, aims to bolster this huge network of land and sea linking Asia and all the way to Europe and Africa. Uh, this is, however, viewed uh, with suspicion in Western capitals as an attempt to assert Chinese influence. And ironically, though, Trump's no-show at the APEC summit is giving Beijing more opportunity to promote this plan. Uh, Trump decided to skip this year's APEC summit, which raised doubts over Washington's commitment and consistency in the Asian region. So Trump's absence is actually drawing Asian nations closer as they face mutual challenge of this rising protest protectionism policy pushed by the Trump administration. And in fact, uh, countries from South to East Asia pressed on with forging multilateral ties on trade and investment at uh, this summit. Well, Mayu, we're seeing a slew of comments from Japanese and Russian leaders uh, in the past couple of days over four disputed islands. What's the latest? 
Well, Turkey's hopes over a possible return of two islands were swiftly shrugged off by Vladimir Putin today. Now, on Wednesday, we saw headlines about Japanese and Russian leaders agreeing to speed up talks on resolving a post-war dispute over four islands that's prevented them from sealing a peace treaty after the World War II. Now, that part about speeding up talks have not changed, uh, at least for now, but Tokyo thought they would get two of the four islands back uh, because the initial report said negotiations would be based on a 1950. 56 declaration uh, when Moscow agreed to return two islands known in Tokyo as the Northern Territories and in Moscow the Southern Kurils. But last night Putin just shrugged off this concept about giving back two islands. Uh, one expert I've talked to said that the territorial dispute is currently a source of leverage that Russia has over Japan. He said that uh, the Japanese government has an incentive to refrain from criticizing Russia since they fear that progress on this territorial issue uh, will be handled. Uh, the, the clearest example of this is J Japan's reluctance uh, to apply real sanctions on Russia after um, the, the issues with the Crimea. Mm -hmm. uh, now, he said, uh, were the dispute to be resolved uh, with the transfer of two islands, Japan would be freer in policy options toward Russia. Uh, but for now, all eyes will be on the Abe Putin meeting expected in January. Well, Mayor, thank you for that. Now, Boeing is being sued by an Indonesian man whose son was killed in the Lion Air plane crash. What do they believe caused the crash, Mayor? Well, plaintiffs uh, believe the aircraft's design was unsafe. Uh, unsafe. Uh, the lawsuit accuses Boeing of failing to inform pilots and airlines of its new safety feature that can cause the 737 MAX 8 aircraft to push the nose down unexpectedly. Now, last month, uh, Lion Air Flight 610 crashed shortly after taking off from Jakarta, killing all 189 people on board. Investigators have been looking into this reported technical issue Yet there is no indication of what caused the crash, but the plane had experienced technical problems related to airspeed and altitude readings. Uh, the lawsuit was filed at the Boeing headquarters in Illinois by the father of uh, Rio Nanda Pratama. Uh, Rio was flying to Indonesia to get married uh, when the plane went down. Mayu, thank you so much for joining me today to discuss these. Arise Asia business correspondent there, Mayu Yoshida.